Listen for their hurt and perspective. Listen for their hurt and perspective. I want to share something here today. Did you know, friends, that many relationships could have been resolved? Many marriages could have been saved if we only developed the art of listening. Amen. Oh, you're not with me yet? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. How great a listener are you? How good a listener are you? Oh, you don't have to answer it. Right? But, but think about it. How good a listener are you? I want to share with you a few reasons, friends, why we should listen. And especially, you know, in the, even in the context of marriage, and it's for every kind of relationship. Listening is important. Is that clear? Why do you think, friends, what do you think is one of the most important traits of a negotiator? They must possess the art of listening. And you know why? Their job is to disarm the perpetrator. But you can never know where his mind is. In other words, your job is to discover where his mind is. Amen. Friends, watch this now. You can never know where his mind is until you listen to him. I want to say something about listening today. Watch this, friends. For did you know there are many people who hear one side of a story and they run with it? Watch this now. And they form conclusions from it. <laughs> and then they are ready to go to execution with it. Hello? Did you know, friends, one of the greatest evils we can, we, we can inflict upon another person is making assumption of their motive. Assuming their motive. In other words, friends, failure to listen to the other side. Amen. Did you know a lot of people have been gone to a Christless grave? Gone to jail for life. Because somebody took one side of the story and run with it and care nothing about the other side. Friends, we must listen to people. The husband comes in the office and says, do you, under, do you know the big problem I have? My wife doesn't understand me. The moment he's ready to speak, she takes over. Something is triggered in her mind. Oh, I remember this. And he cannot complete a sentence. <laughs> she takes over and she carry on for the next 10 minutes. And then he tries to get another word in. And she said, what you said? And she takes over again, overpowers him, and carry on for the next 15 minutes. The man after a while recoils in his shell, moves to his room, and is broken. They live like that for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Unfulfilled, unsatisfied, broken in the marriage. Why? He'll never get an opportunity to explain his perspective. For nobody listens to him. Did you know, friends, the greatest, one of the greatest examples of love to our brethren is to be a good listener amen to be a good listener 
I like how James put it, friends. James, the book of James, chapter 1. You know what it says? James puts it beautifully. James 1 and verse 19. He says, we must be what? Quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. In other words, watch this, friends. Quick to hear, to listen, slow to speak. No wonder God gives us two ears and one mouth. He expects us to listen more than we talk. Amen. And if we master the two, the first two, listening, quick to listen and slow to speak, then it will take care of the third. It will help us to control our anger. Amen. Quick to hear, slow to speak. Oh, I will have a word today for men. Men, let me tell you this. I sometimes talk to the men, you know, and I say, listen to me, especially when your wife is upset. <laughs> don't think for one moment, don't even try it to think you can outdo her in talking. So watch this now. Whenever your wife is upset, do this, men. You must be ready to listen. Hello today. And if you should interrupt her, it must be with the words. Tell me more. Tell me more. Did you know, friends, men, I want to talk to you men. One of the greatest accomplishments in your life when you get married is to be a great listener. Are you with me? Oh, yes. Yes. Because a lady talks for a number of reasons. As a matter of fact, that's one of the great needs of a woman. She must talk. And therefore, men, you must listen. One man, you know, one man, he was married for 65 years. He was asked, what's the secret of the longevity of your marriage? What is it? What's the golden touch? What is that you have mastered where you have been married for 65 years? He says, Pastor, whenever my wife begins to speak, I just turn off my hearing aid. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no interruption. Man, you've got to be a great listener. Can I share something with you today? One of the great needs of a woman, among others, is she must talk. That's her tool. And when she talks, my men, don't always take it personal. It's not you. Many times, she's only giving expression to her emotion. Amen. When the lady say amen, you know we're getting somewhere. Watch this now. A few reasons a lady's women talk. Number one, a woman talks to connect with you. To connect with you. There's something in the field of therapy we call bid to connect. She comes and she talks and she says, okay, you know, you know this microphone, um, you know, it's black. And also, it's cordless. You don't have to say, what? I know that already. No. She wants conversation. In other words, you call it a bid to connect with you. You, a wise husband, you say, mm-hmm, and it's nice too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> she wants conversation. So you turn toward bid. But if you turn away bid, it's going to be trouble. So don't see this. See her intention. She wants to connect with. She wants conversation. Amen? 
So number one, a woman talks to connect. Number two, a woman talks to sort her thoughts. In other words, she thinks aloud. So don't always try to fix her. <laughs> you see, men are naturally fixers. They want to fix things. But sometimes it is not a fixer she needs. She only needs a sounding board. Amen. She needs somebody just to listen. Sometimes I say to my men, stop fixing, start listening. Oh, friends. If I had another seminar, I would teach you the psychology of listening, how powerful it is. A woman talks sometimes as therapy, and a man too. Talk as therapy. They are feeling something deep in their heart. They have nobody else to speak it to. So when they come home, they want to pour out to you. Don't try to... to Hijack the conversation and take it over? No. They want to heal. So listen to them. And listen not just to their words, but listen to the emotion behind the words. Jesus did it with Nicodemus. You must be born again. Oh, how can I be born the second time? How can I go the second time into my mother's womb and be born? How can a man be born when he's old? Jesus didn't follow him up and react. Don't be a reactive listener. No. Jesus knew his needs. Hello today. So Jesus looked beyond his fault and saw his need. And Jesus focused on his need. So Jesus came back. Okay. In his mind, Jesus was saying, you see all that? It's okay. You must be born again. One more time like a missile to his heart. You must be born again. Four or five times in that chapter, Jesus, Jesus punched with the word. You must be born again. Friends, meet them at the point of their needs. Not just what they say. Look beyond what they say and feel the emotion in their heart. The Bible uses a word called scope. When it, when it talks about look well to their needs, it means scope, like a microscope. You, you put everything aside and you look trying to find their deepest need. And you speak to their needs, not just their words. Another thing about listening, friend, don't be a reactive listener. Somebody says something, who are you talking? No, don't react. Don't be too quick to react. Christian maturity dictates that we try to understand their needs. Amen? When your spouse comes to you with hurtful words, what you remember, it's not always you. They could be hurting, and that's why they hurt you. Have you heard the phrase that it is hurt people that hurt people? Ah, oh, your mother hurt you when she was at, when you were a child. And 20 years, 30 years after, you can't let it go. Ask yourself the question, what was it that was hurting her that caused her to hurt me? And when you understand their perspective, when you see life from their perspective, and you have an understanding of their perspective, then you can forgive. It will help you to deal with them better, for you know that they did what they knew. You don't have to hold it against them for life. They did it because they too were hurting. 
So it helps you to forgive them. Amen? Amen. Oh, friends, listen to their hurt and perspective. Not